Hello and welcome everybody, I'm one proper Baron and this is Crusader Kings 2 After the End, a mod that puts you into the post-apocalyptic wastelands of America. Now you might say nothing changed, but there's a lot that changed. In the last playthrough we were on the East Coast and we played Duke Levi the Liberator. It was a great playthrough, I had a great time with it. Uh, essentially, you know, we made the Great Lake area as well as the New York area, the New York State area that is into a Jewish new community. It was a lot of fun, the AI actually did a great job as well, but in this series we're going to change the coasts. We're going to go to the West Coast and we're going to try and restore the Empire of California. Usually when you are an Empire level title holder, you are done with the playthrough. You know, it is so easy, you just kind of say, you know what, let's just let this one fade out and let's move on to the next one, but... In California, things are different. The Celestial Emperor Elton IV is not in the position that he would like to be in. The Emperors have been weakened over the last years and the former governors are now, and this was a test game, the former governors are now kings and are unwilling to follow us. We will change this. We will rise up again and find strength. California has seen better days. The Emperor has become a mere figurehead with his former governors acting as independent rulers in all but name. Can you reunite California and its divinely ordained ruler, or will disharmony and strife continue to reign? The story of California is quite interesting. <clears throat> because in California, what essentially happened was Elton I, the lawgiver, rose up to create the kingdom and then the empire of California. And what he did with this was quite significant. I mean, look at these borders. That is a big boy, a big boy California. He erected this empire, and when he did it, he essentially created his own religion to go with it. Setic. The Setic faith involves the study of philosophical writings by a number of great teachers, so-called gurus, including the Emperor, Buddha, Christ and Hubbard, also Muhammad, you know, they didn't write it here, but it is true, adherents seek enlightenment through meditation and discussion of the writings. The first Emperor of California formally organized a faith with secular and religious power deeply intertwined within the imperial title, and the head of the faith is traditionally chosen from among his descendants. The god names are the Emperor, Buddha, Christ and Hubbard and then the evil god names the Unenlightened and Moloch. The scripture are of course the writings. Now we are Celestial Emperor Elton IV, part of a long line of the Yudkov family. Uh, Yudkow? I'm not, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that. And everything was created by Elton I, the lawgiver. He established both the Californian Empire and the Setic Faith, uniting all of Old California under one flag and one religion. And what a great man he was indeed, a genius, you know. We have his blood and his genius gene in us, but, you know, we will have to see whether that can work out. And we are a fairly weak character. Celestial Emperor Elton IV is nothing if not a weak emperor. He's possessed cruel, humble, diligent, honest, a scholar, a figurehead emperor, way of the book and mastermind theologian. So he, he is very religiously minded. He follows the way of the book, which is the way of Buddha, Sagan and Hawking. And he is a figurehead emperor. Imperial authority has been severely limited including the ability to make war for personal de jure claims. It will take skillful political and theological maneuvering to remove the legal and cultural restrictions currently in place. Despite the military restrictions, the favor of the imperial court is a powerful diplomatic tool. Essentially, we are limited to Sacramento. We sit in our good old great imperial palace, enjoy the days, uh, you know, have them pass by, write some teachings every now and again, but the kings of Jefferson, the Valley, Grand Francisco, SoCal and Baja are on their own and they are independent of us, not even intending to do anything close to serving us again. Uh, they are bureaucratic by the way, which gives them, you know, some benefits. That's perfectly fine, don't worry about it too much. Here's the important part about this. We will regain our power and you might say this is impossible because we are just one province. How are we going to do this? They're not going to bow to us. Well, the Emperor has some really cool mechanics. Uh, the primary one is that we can request military aid. If anybody were to attack us, we could call all Setic rulers and demand that they protect the Emperor. We can also reassert Imperial power here. For too long, legal restrictions have constrained the secular power of the Emperor. The dark days of incompetent Emperors are far in the past, and it is time for the current Emperor to throw off the judicial shackles and restore the office to its ancient glory. Loses the trade, figurehead Emperor. That is the goal. That is where I want to be, and... I have my ways to achieve this. In our current position, we need to be worrying about everything going on in our surrounding area because all of these kings are independent, eyeing our power, you know, sometimes maybe visiting the court, but that is also about it. But I can use them, and I will use them. Primarily, I will use the lord over here of Jefferson. Let's just take a look if he is willing to marry right away. 
is not. I've, I've seen this before. So, I, you know, as I said, I did a bit of a test game. What I'm going to do is I'm going to borrow some money from the bankers. Hey. Then I'm going to send you a small gift of a million dollars. God, that hurts. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. And now let's take a look if you are willing to marry. Yes, you are indeed. Even ma willing to marry the older one. 29 years old. That's fair. I shall marry you to him. And then what about Baha? Would you be willing to marry my other daughter? Yes, perfect. So now we have two kings on our side that believe that they are allies of the emperor. And they are, in fact, but they are allies to a different degree. Let's take an ambition here. I think, you know, El Elton IV is not really much in terms of realistic politics. Uh, you know, he doesn't really care for it. Instead, let's try to reject cruelty. Celestial Emperor Elton IV, as a devoted ascetic, is trying to learn reject cruelty. And then our ambition shall be a pure theological one. The interesting part about this is that the Empire of California has been under good old seniority for quite some time now. And I think it is time to end this. I don't think that Celestial Emperor Elton IV believes this, but I believe that his children are smart enough to do this. Look at him. He is a quick man, very deceitful. You know, he knows the way of the cowl and the Emperor likes him. And then we have the other son who is a, a way of the book. But he holds on to the principle of uh, principles of humbleness, so he will uh, or humility, pardon me. So he will not get involved in this. But then we have the way of the fist, Prince Turpin. He is deceitful, wrathful, and proud. He will also influence the celestial emperor to undergo or you know undertake a law change to move to primogenitor. Uh, we shall do that. Uh, we need to make sure though that we can switch to the late administration uh, before that. We can't do it right now, but we will do it in the future. I promise you that uh, this much, or at least I hope that we will be able to do it. Uh, let me actually check something. Request council support. I will all owe all of these people a favor, and I think it's perfectly fine. I think that is perfectly acceptable. What are they going to do with those favors, huh? I will support you. All right, and that's four. That is four already. So let's just uh, change the law right now. There you go, easy. Easiest money I've ever made. And with that being done, we can change the laws to primogenitor. Now, as I said, I do not believe that this is a plot of the emperor. I think it is a plot of his youngest and his oldest son. And they want some balance because it makes it at least more likely that they will gain power fairly soon. Alright, and with that we can actually start the game here. They accepted the marriages, alright. Uh, do you want an alliance already? No, no alliance. I, they, they're gonna come around. Don't worry about it too much. I'm not too worried about that part yet. Uh, what I'm really interested in is marrying you. So you are my... Oh, come on, I don't want you to marry Trixie. Don't be crazy. What about an alliance right now? Still a no. Um, they do wax and wane in their opinions. There you go. He, for example, now agrees, I guess, because he slowly but surely realized we had the same interests in some way. I honestly can't tell you in what way, but in some sort of way, I assume. Doesn't want it yet. Oh, and he is at war himself, attacking Chief Parker of Duck Valley in Jefferson Duck Valley Vassalization War. Oh, that's a big vassalization right there. I can tell you that much. Um, I think what the Emperor is going to do right now is he's going to write some books. That of the ascetic faith, the emperor, is, uh, the emperor is expected to interpret the writings of the great teachers as well as producing original teachings of his own. So we are the lord of this one and because of this we have to write some stuff every now and again. And uh, if we do write something good, then the uh, thing goes up, the moral authority goes up. If we do write something bad, it goes down. If we don't write anything and die, I believe it also goes down. Let's write something. You know, that's what I'm here for at the end of the day. As uh, the emperor. Come on, I need your... I need it. Inspiration strikes. Inspiration has struck you. You are swept along with a great wave of ideas, your quill furiously filling pages with insightful teachings as your candles burn down to nubs. In this moment, you feel transcendent and, and enlightened, certain that your words will match those of the great teachers. Whether your words stand the test of time remains to be seen, but for now there is no room for doubt. This will be a masterpiece. Oh, that is nice. Look at this. Plus 2% moral authority. He is a genius when it comes to religion. I mean, let's not be... Confused here. I think I'm trying to, trying to join you just to support your war morally. We have one more benefit, by the way. We can recruit the Hawaiian Guard, which is literally like the Varangian Guard from the Byzant uh, Byzantines. And they're fairly cheap. And 2,000 people, I mean, that's nothing to sneeze at. You know, definitely nothing to sneeze at. 
Uh, there are many mysteries in the ascetic faith. It might be interesting to spend some time de delving into the old texts of the writings. Absolutely, why wouldn't I? And there you go, the war's over. We did support him morally. Hopefully that makes him more willing. Come on, I need your lines, bro. Don't do me dirty like this. Please. Don't do me dirty like this. Um, I can't actually get him in an alliance. Not right now, anyway. I really... You know what we could do? You have a daughter. Your daughter? What about uh, the bastard? Alright, I'll marry him. Alright, the bastard. My old bastard son can have that. If my opinion ruled, the world would be a more chaotic but fun place. If I keep following the laws, the world would have less chaos but also be less fun. I think he would turn... I mean, he's cruel. You know what? Actually, it's it's arbitrary. Yeah. You know what? It's a flawed character trait, but he is a cruel man already. Those are his poisons. Pretty much. A wandering warrior has requested an audience. It appears if, uh, as if the entire court is a bust with stories of his exploits. This Melvin the Fearless is seemingly of great renown. He wishes to swear fealty to me, having heard of my relation to the legendary Elton Yutkov. I truly am blessed by my blood. Uh, let's make him a commander, and let's also make sure that the commander titles are always filled, as well as the court physician title. Thank you very much. Hmm, so this betrothal is going, and all of a sudden he wants an alliance. We have done it. Diplomacy has prevailed. In the past few months, you have been spending many nights reading the writings. The text contains many items of wisdom and also give hints to the most important mysteries of Hubbard. There you go. And now we got two alliances going. Now what are we going to do with those alliances? They don't become our vessels just because of alliances. No, they won't. But what they will do is support me in a war to vassalize Grand Francisco. Or, well, you know, not vassalize them, but establish them as a tribute, a tributary. And not as, as a tributary state, that would be permanent, but we are not big enough to do this. We also can't push the de jure claims on our duchies here because we would need 1,000 prestige to actually get that done. What I'm going to do instead because of this, I can't even declare this one, you always need all this karma and money and prestige, it's crazy. We're going to extort tribute from Grand Francisco, hopefully making it so, that at least until Celestial Emperor Elton IV, which might happen quite soon, mind you, but at least until the day he dies, we will have them as our tribute. And once he passes away, it will be Prince Ruben, the gullible, so to speak, that will take over, and he will be influenced by Prince Turpin and Galen the Bastard, just like Celestial Emperor Elton IV has been influenced by them. And once he's influenced by them, of course, uh, he will go on and probably do their bidding. This is a, you know, we are a weak emperor, not just in name, but also in reality. But our sons, at least two of them, are very very impactful. Galen the Bastard, truly a great son. Uh, let's declare the war here. You know, as as I said, this tributary ship will break as soon as we die, but we can restore it, and until then, we get prestige, and we will also be able to actually get uh, more money from them. So, and of course, they will also join us in our wars, so that will be incredibly beneficial. Lex, uh, let's extort some tribute. That's right. And let's call these fellas in. Allied, okay, that's a strong yes from you. That's also a strong yes. And with that, let us raise the Hawaiian Guard and hope that our allies will be here quick enough. Of course, you'll honor your obligation. Come on, where's the other one? There he is. All right, please gather over here in Sacramento. I fear that they will be coming soon. They are in Marin currently. Napa. Uh, are you Napa? Oh, Napa. Sorry, not Napa. Contra Costa. Alameda. Oh, okay, so they're still gathering their troops up, much like they are. So potentially, we will here be in time. And Prince Ruben, of course, should be married, but we only have a relative? Is that my... Wait a minute, what? No, 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 you. Is that my... My sister. So is... No, 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 we don't... Look, she can't even have children. We don't need to do this. Instead, if I can't find anybody from elsewhere, I shall go ahead and simply get a debutante. Hello, Jenny. Uh, not the best, but, you know, it could be much worse. And I would like her to marry good old Prince Reuben. There you go. He lost a bit of prestige. Uh, yeah, that's... Oof. Big, big ass prestige loss. But that is okay. Oh, they are facing their own rebellion. Lysenian Peasant Revolt. That's fine. They are... Oh, God. I hope that they come in time because we desperately, desperately need it. Of course, by the way, the Emperor will not be a commander. Are you crazy? Absolutely not. The Emperor is sitting at home writing. 
It did come in time. Oh, this was damn close. They barely arrived in time. Ooh, Galen the Bastard. You know what? I will name you an advisor. Absolutely. Your incompetent superintendent of revenues has led a group of smugglers into the county of Sacramento. Apparently he thought they were merchants. What a fool. Hmm. I will substitute you. Oh my god. Are you seeing this? That is outrageous. Turpin can become the spy master. My children have now more influence on the council than ever before. All of a sudden being advisors and uh, spy masters. Very, very nice. Ooh, and they hired some more people, but we still will be able to destroy them. I think fairly simply as well. I'm just looking out that we can... I think I can siege this down before he would get this, right? How quickly are you sieging this? 21%, Jesus. It's damn quick, dude. I think we still got time, though. I'm going to slow it down just a tiny little bit so that I can uh, view this and move as soon as possible. Oh, we already have a court physician, don't we? Let's get treated here. Please treat me, my heir. We ele elevate your pain. Prince Reuben lit three candles and had you join hands with him. After a moment of silence, he had you repeat some words after him in a language you did not understand. You know, that's what hippies do. And we are pretty much, I mean, a hippie religion. Look at us. You know, we go around, point at people and tell them, Hey, my man, this is a lifestyle, not a religion. And uh, that's what Setic uh, is all about. All right, let's go in here. We can, or we should easily be able to take them out. I'm going to focus... On heavy infantry here. We do have a decent amount of it anyway. Oh, and I have a fever. Please save me. Let's look at this fight. We should be good, but I am not quite certain. Yes, we are. I mean, good old Mayor Larch of Sparks is melting them right there. Let's seek some treatment. Dedication to religious pursuits has been noticed around the realm. Among others, it is quite impressed teacher Wendell of Roseville. You have maintained correspondence on various religious and philosophical matters for some time and find that you are rapidly becoming good friends. Very nice. Please treat me. The liquid in the chalice was warm and sour. It will chase the other uh, other heat away, Prince Reuben explained, and it did work. Man, Reuben is good. I like him. Good kid. Oh no, we're new, Monik. You know this war might be for naught, all things considered, because we are going to die immediately. Please help me. Reuben told you that the task of interpreting the writings is difficult work, but cleansing through fire is an art as old as the world itself. Little did you know he would have you walk over burning coals. Oh, and we are brave and zealous. Oh, Lord. Mystically altered. See, this is why Reuben is going to be the Emperor. He is not strong, he's not a strong character, but he is wise when it comes to theology, whereas his brothers are good in ruling from the shadows. I think that is the dynamic I'm going to go for here in this playthrough. Uh, you know, we are role-playing on this channel, uh, and that is exactly what we're going to be doing there. We're going to go ahead and... Make it so that these are the lords behind the figurehead emperor. Because at the end of the day, we are exactly that. A mere figurehead. I'm going to beat you up and then return. Got him. Oh, we made a prisoner there. That's nice. Let's siege it down. And the apostate. My wife! Guru Wendell burst into your chambers, flanked by several warriors, dragging Celestial Empress Seneca of California with them in chains. My Celestial Emperor, there are many concerned peasants claiming that their children are plagued by nightmares of this woman. She's obviously a witch. What shall be done with her? Look, we're friends, man, but you're going too far. This is unacceptable. She's my wife. Do you not understand this? She's following the way of the cow. She's perfectly normal. She's trying to uh, be no longer lustful. She's a good, good ascetic. Let it go. Unacceptable. Jesus. I'm not gonna get out of here. That's nonsense. This is crazy. Stop making my wife look bad. Alright, and we imprisoned the King of Grand Francisco himself. Oh, that is good. That is some good stuff. But you know what I'm going to do, actually? This is not a decision that Celestial Emperor Elton IV is making. This is a decision that they are making in the field after they captured him. Galen the Bastard has decided that the King is more useful when he is dead. So he's going to execute him. Uh, the princes will inherit, and then we are one step closer towards making Grand Francisco so unstable that they will no longer be able to resist us. And that is exactly what we- uh, wait, who are you? 
Oh, she just got this. This title actually is seniority, I assume. Oh, it's elective. Interesting. Huh. Sapphire. Okay, that's not gonna last. One way or another, uh, we have taught them a lesson, what it means to resist us. And we shall continue with this exact lesson. Come on, dude, stop walking. Prison somebody else. Very nice. I, I mean, I welcome it at all, but come on. 100% we imprisoned him yet again. You know what? I'm gonna teach him what it means. California, uh, Grand Francisco will not be left with anybody alive if I have a word to say in it. It has come to my attention that the uphold of ceremonies of the valley, perfect Nolan of Central Valley. Who are you? Prefect of Shasta Cascade. Up there. Interesting. Hmm. Has bribed and threatened his way. That's okay. He's just the valley. I'll be real with you. I don't care about the valley. They will not declare. They will not dare declare war against me. And if they do, they shall fall like others before them. I think we can still beat him here. And that should be the, the victory. Oh, we inherited the barony. I'm okay with that. Absolutely. And my son. Man, we are on the council, boys. What up? What up? Entire family is here now. And this war is over. And just like that, we have a tributary. It has come to your attention that King Pollock has claims on sacred imperial land. It is irrelevant whether the claims are clever fabrications or the genuine result of noble lineage. Only members of your dynasty have a right to the imperial titles. An eloquent and inspiring missive will bestow imperial favor. In a letter requesting dissolution of the claim, personalized copies of my wife's teachings will bestow imperial favor. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Let's send him... Let he got rid of it, I believe. Yes, he did. Good. This is what you get. And you are now my tributary, my dear King Walter of Grand Francisco. It has been done. And just like this, we have gained a powerful ally because this one can always be called in. So the way I see it, we now have a lot of prestige and maybe, likely, in the next episode, we might even be able to grab the first piece of land from the valley. I hereby renounce my claims on the title of the Imperial Seed. Good. Dumb nerd. Don't you dare do it again. Um, I will repay the bankers first and foremost. Thank you very much. Now, we are taking a look at this. So, in the next episode, we will be able to lay the jure claim. I think we should lay it to the... Uh, mother load. Yeah, I think we should put it on the mother load and take this, this land. Um, we are going to grow, believe you me. And we have made a tremendous step today when we, as, you know, essentially, essentially established our power over California. Excellent. Now, once we pass away, that power will be gone. But until then, you know, we are now closer than, than ever to actually push a claim and do good. I will see you in the next episode when the sons of the emperor will continue their schemes and hopefully lead us to glory. What is Duke Levi the Liberator doing, I wonder? He's just sitting around. He's a count at this point, uh, not doing much. I hope that he survives, but I have my doubts. Do we have a... Uh, I don't think the Prophet and the Consumerists have risen yet. One way or another, I will see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. Later, Alligator.